There are a few things I really struggled to fully understand when starting photography, but once I did, they completely changed my photos. Hi, my name is Wase, and in this video, I'll be going over five different concepts that I think are essential for any beginner photographer to learn. Now, I'm not saying that these five concepts are the only concepts, but I think for me, they were the concept that made the most difference. So I think before you learn these concepts, it's even more vital to learn how to learn these concepts. And I recently made a video about that exactly. I'll put a link about that somewhere above. And there I talk about how to effectively use different learning concepts to ensure that you are able to get the photo that you want when you want it and be able to apply all the things you learn in the field. So concept number one, the exposure triangle. And this goes without saying, but no concept photography video would be complete without the exposure triangle. By itself, the exposure triangle seems good in theory, but the real power in understanding it comes when you're able to realize that all the different things, the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed affect every other part of your photo. So whether it's your ability to actually edit it, whether it's your ability to get it all in focus, and whether it's able to create the story that you want to tell out of your photo, right? So the biggest challenge is trying to translate that into muscle memory, right? Because you don't want to go out into the field and have to actively retrieve that information, right? You want to be able to seamlessly work with the camera and change those settings depending on what you want your photo to look like. Concept number two is focus and depth of field. And the reason that these two are placed together is because they relate well with each other and I think learning them together makes sense. So I think about focus in this way, basically that it is the ability to get to a maximum sharpness with your current camera, lens, settings, etc. Depth of field on the other hand deals with the idea of how much of the scene of the photo you're able to get into sharpness. So shallow depth of field means a very low portion of the entire scene will be sharp. A larger depth of field means everything is sharp. And depending on what you actually want to do, you might want one or the other. Portraits, a lot of times, usually the person is fully sharp, but everything around them is blurry. Uh, for landscape photography, you might want everything to be in focus. So how do you actually do that? How do you change the depth of field, the focus? Well, you change the depth of field by controlling the aperture. The wider the aperture, the shallower the depth of field. But you have to realize that there are drawbacks to everything, right? So let's say you want a very large depth of field, and this means you want everything in focus. But the smaller you close your aperture to get that large depth of field, you might run into different things like diffraction, which is when you go to very small apertures, the photo starts to appear more blurry or more soft. On the other hand, to get the same exposure with that larger depth of field, you might have to deal with a very slow shutter speed. So that will kind of limit what you photograph. So if you want to photograph, for example, a flying bird, right? You don't want to have a very slow shutter speed. What that means is then you also don't want to have a very small aperture. And that also means then you don't have a very large depth of field. So concept number three, sharpness and focus. And what I really want to draw attention to is the distinction between them. So a photo can be completely in focus and not very sharp. And what does that even mean, right? How does that even happen, right? How do you get to a point where the subject that you want is in focus but not sharp enough? And there's a lot of different things that come into play. So let's think about focus defining as the maximum possible or the best possible sharpness that you can get with the conditions, with your lens, with your camera, etc. And sharpness is the effect created by that focus. But there can be different conditions and different settings that control how sharp your photo can get. And so what this means is that you can focus as best as possible with those settings, but the sharpness levels will be different for all of those different configurations. A lot of times, if you have maximum focus, but your photo isn't really sharp, it can be because of things like you might have moved the camera when taking the photo, you might be teetering into the realm of diffraction, which we kind of talked about with those small apertures, or it might be that your lens is just not good enough. But I don't really want to focus on the gear. I think you want to be able to get the best possible photo with the gear that you have. So concept number four is perspective distortion. This involves some of the photos we see with a wide angle lens or a telescopic lens. So the reason this was very important to me was because it helped me understand how the positioning of me versus my subject changes the type of photos that I can create. So let's get this straight though. The lens itself doesn't have anything to do with the distortion. It's more about our positioning of the camera relative to the subject itself that changes how that subject appears. 
Wide angle lens don't actually cause that distortion where we see the foreground kind of blown up. It's the fact that we're able to get very close to the actual subject. Similarly, using a telescopic lens doesn't actually cause compression. It's the fact that we are located much further away and when we zoom in or crop in to a specific point, we get that compressed feel. Concept number five is how sensor sizes, focal lengths, and lenses relate to one another. So I have a crop sensor camera, but a lot of times most of the YouTubers that I watch or the people that I go to for advice have full frame sensors. So what this means is that every time they do give advice that relates to one of those three things, I have to then translate it back into what it would mean for me to create something similar. When trying to buy a lens, for example, I needed to think about, okay, will a full frame lens work on my crop sensor camera? Will a crop sensor lens work on my crop sensor camera? And if I decide to upgrade to a full frame camera, what happens with that crop sensor lens? And how does focal lens fit into all of this? So what does 16 millimeter on a crop sensor lens look like versus 16 millimeters on a full frame lens? So the first thing that I learned was that focal length is actually a feature of the lens and not the camera or the sensor size itself. So 16 millimeters on a crop sensor lens means exactly the same things as 16 millimeter on a full frame lens. What differs is the opening basically of the lens itself relative to the sensor. So for a full frame lens, you will have a larger opening to let more light in because the sensor for the camera is much larger. But that also means then a crop sensor lens will have a much smaller opening. So when you use a crop sensor lens on a full frame camera, it's basically that the full frame sensor is a little bit too big. The crop sensor lens is a little bit too small for the light to come in. So there's a portion of the sensor that doesn't actually get the light. So when people compare sensors, they compare crop ratios. Basically, how much larger is one sensor relative to another? And this kind of impacts the focal lens that you actually use. Basically, if you are using a crop sensor camera, what you're doing is you're taking a full frame camera and then you're zooming in to only the size of the crop sensor and then filling the frame with that view. So you can imagine that an image created by a full frame camera using 200 millimeter focal length can also be recreated by a crop sensor camera with only 133 millimeter focal length. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.